Welcome to Kirkland Park in Kirkland, Quebec for this round robin game at the U9A level featuring the DDO Expos and the West Island Royals. Uh, the winner of this game clinches second in the pool and will play a quarterfinal against the team who finishes third. The team that finishes third place in Pool B. Both of these two teams lost to Lakeshore. As we kick things off here in the top of the first with Massimo Piccioni kicking things off at the top of the lineup. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is U9. So what they do have at U9 are the pitching machines. Though there is a designated pitcher who for this inning is Matteo Di Perna. There is a designated pitcher in that area, that little circle right around the mound. Nathan Bullcock uh, Landry is at short, and there's a pitch that uh, Piccioni doesn't like. And remember, it's basically five pitches max, and then I believe they would break out the T, or at least that was what it's like at the B level. Swung on and hit on the ground, right back to the second baseman. They'll flip the first in time, and that is out number one. Bang, bang, play at first base, but the Royals get the first out, and now stepping into bat for the Expos is Bryce Mendel. I uh, wonder if there is a relation between Di Pirna, who's pitching tonight, and uh, Di Pirna, who plays for U11A. We've seen that West Island Royals team earlier this season beat the Sirwa Red Voltageers via a mercy rule 14 to 3. That swung on and missed. Strike one in there, nothing in one the count, although there won't be any ball fours here. No walks. Mendel looking to get a hold of one. And he's going to lay off of this one. And he fouls this one off. And the fourth pitch of the at-bat is coming up. Light drizzle here in Kirkland. And that's hit well, and it gets through to left field. Peter Shaho, the right field, the left fielder, knocks it down. And it is a base hit for the Expos. And DDO has a runner aboard. Bryce Mendel hitting one over the shortstop, Mason Bocock Landry. Bocock Landry, 21. Liam Garland over at third. On the left side of the diamond for the West Island Royals. A tough loss, 15 to 14 against Lakeshore. who also beat this Expos team. So Lakeshore is automatically the number one seed and have clinched the buy into the semifinals of the on-island portion of this region. Now they have some issues with that pitching machine. I'd like to take a second here to remind you that tomorrow we have ourselves a triple header of gold medal games. Starting at 10 o'clock, all games at St. Lazar, U13, Gunnawage taking on the Pierre Fall Yankees, who won the regular season championship and now, of course, the playoff championship of the Lac St. Louis section. So the on island section of that region. U15, Gahawage taking on Soulange. That'll be the second game. The Warhawks will be the home team. And then U18 wrapping things up at four. It's Gahawage and Soulange. Could be a couple of very interesting games for you here on BBM to close out our coverage of the 2021 Lac St. Louis baseball season. 
or at least in the B division. That's it, foul, and look out, that gives the Royals bench a jump, jump scare. <laughs> That's one of those scary movie jump scares that the Royals bench just had over there. <laughs> As uh, Jordan Mandel making the Royals sweat over there. <laughs> Here's the pitch to the lefty. And he hits this one right through the hole on the left side of the diamond. Jordan Mandel back-to-back -back hits for the Expos. And I believe that what this represents is actually a three, it's a three run max, I think. Three run maximum per inning, right? So at the U9A level, it is a three run max. And so what would be that third run is coming into bat right now. It's Marcelo Piccioni with two da one down, two runners aboard, and the DDO Expo is knocking on the run's door. Of course, uh, next year U11. That's when a lot of that's when these pitchers first start pitching competitively. Well, you see, De Pirna's on the mound, but he's not actually pitching. It's the machine. So right now, he, the Expos coach is trying to force feed good pitches into that strike zone because you're trying to get your team to score runs. But De Pirna, right now, the good thing about uh, him at this level is they learn how to pitch and they learn how to field properly. So far the first couple of pitches that Piccioni has seen have not been to his liking. Both Mendel's on base, Bryce on second, Jora on first. Swung on and missed. Uh, the other game that's uh, scheduled for today, the Group B game, apparently going to be happening on the field parallel to us here. St. Laurent Crush and the Lachine A's, and actually that game was moved to 130. Lachine A's looking like a powerful team on that side of the bracket, 1-0. And the A's won their first game 17 to 6. So two runners aboard. And the Expos knocking on the door here, trying to start this game off with a, a flying start. They did not get off to a good start in their game against Lakeshore Blue. In fact, we're down by eight early on. That's hit into foul territory. And it'll just drop right in front of the Royals bench. So we'll see if uh, Piccioni can get a hold of one that he really likes here. See Shaho here in left pretty much hugging the line. And that's hit well into deep center. And that's going to fall. Center fielder in hot pursuit. It's thrown in. The throw, and he gets in. What a start for the DDO Expos, a three spot here on a three run home run, courtesy of Marcelo Piccioni. And that's three runs here in the top of the first. And my bad, I thought they were playing with three run maxes, but I believe here in the regionals it's five. As Quinn Lazar steps into bat. Hey. 
Lazar doesn't swing at that one. So one out here and three runs in for the DDO Expos. Remember, the Spos only scored six in that game against Lakeshore yesterday. Lachine A's played a game that was suspended, and that one swung and hit onto the right side of the diamond. It's a base hit. Throw it back into first, there's the second, and that is a single, and the beat goes on for DDO here in the top of the first. And Max Basel stepping in number six in the gray. He represents what would be the fifth run for the Expos in the top of the first inning. So a three nothing start. And that one swung on and missed by Bissell. Lazar's at first after the single. Four straight Expos have gotten on base. And obviously with the machine pitching to the player, there's going to be no walks or hit by pitches, which will be rewarded in bases. That's hit on the inside part of the infield, and it's caught. Now they got a double play possibility, but it won't be made but a good catch at third for the second out of the inning that's Liam Garland 26 working the hot corner and getting the second out on the pop out and here comes Dylan Rose here with two down in the top of the first so Rose stepping into bat winner of this game finishes second in the pool the loser will finish third and go up against what appears to be the St. Laurent crush. But anything is possible. Hit on the ground, right back to second. They're gonna flip it to first, second, I should say, but there's no out. And that is gonna, gonna keep the Expos beat going here. Little miscommunication in both Rose and uh, Quinn Lazar advance. So Lazar's on second. And Dylan Rose is on first. So Rose represents what would be the fifth run as Nicholas Ng steps into bat for the Expos. Ng decides to lay off. Three nothing lead for the DDO Expos in the top of the first. And Ng hits this one, caught right at second base and that is out number three. So the Expos score three and the Royals are coming up to bat. It's three nothing DDO heading into the bottom of the first. You're watching Baby Blue Memories. We welcome you back to Park Kirkland, bottom of the first. The DDO Expo is putting up a three spot here in this UA9, uh, U9A round robin regional game. It's time for the Royals to try and respond, and Alexi Prevo will try to do that for the Royals. Jagger Bomer and Sammy, number, the number three hitter, Sammy Granado, for the Royals. DDO getting a three-run home run, courtesy of Marcelo Piccioni, in the top of that first inning. So that's why we are in this situation. Expos three, Royals no score. Winner of this game finishes second and will play in a quarterfinal against a team which finishes last in Pool B as we have a foul ball. I would not want to be hanging around. I would not want to build a house around here. I'd be a little nervous to have baseballs flying into my living room. One and one the count here. And that'll be the quarterfinal. The other quarter would be the 2-3. Lakeshore already clinched the spot. 
into the semis by virtue of a one-run win over this Royals team earlier in the week. So this is the battle for second place. Hit on the ground by Prevo, and that'll get through the left side of the infield. Prevo's aboard, and Alexi Prevo has himself a leadoff single, and it's time for the Royals to go to work with Bomer now stepping into bat. So Jagger Bomer stepping into bat for the West Island Royals. Coming up at 1.30 here at Kirkland Park, there will be another game. That will be the other pool. St. Laurent crushing the Lachine A's. The crush look like they may end up getting that final seed. Currently in last place, they would need to beat the Lachine A's by three four or five runs to finish out of last place in that pool. St. Laurent lost 6-4 to four to Pierrefall. Pierrefall lost to the Lachine A 17-14. And that's not the only high scoring game. There was a 15-14 game earlier this week between Lakeshore and West Island. So a lot of high scoring games here in the round robin portion. And that one's hit well and over the head of the right fielder. And that gets all the way to the warning track. One run is in, Prevo will score. And here comes Bomer, and he will score. And the West Island Royals put two up on the board, it's three to two. Jagger Bomer puts one into a tough spot for the Expos right fielder. Right over his head it went. Hit pretty much a, a shot into right center. So two Royals come in and now it's a 3-2 game. And Sammy Granado's in. So the Expos have not recorded an out. The Royals have scored two. It's a 3-2 game. Sammy Granado decides to lay off the pitch. I think these coaches are going to get tired of that pitching machine as the season comes to an end. They don't want to see another pitching machine until, well, at least training camp, maybe February when, January, February, when they try to get the kids inside to do some, uh, some hitting. And right now, Granado is not seeing anything that he likes. So he's just laying off. And he fouls this one off. A foul tip. Granado misses this one. Three two expos here. Bottom of the first inning, no outs. Sammy Granado, the number three hitter, is in. Liam Garland batting fourth, and then Mason Boko Landry, 21. In the fifth spot. Those are the three batters that are Guaranteed to come up here as the West Island Royals have scored two. The bases are empty. And Granado comes up empty on this, and that's one down here in the bottom of the first inning. So here's Liam Garland. It's his turn to try and keep up the Royals. Uh, at Tempo, one down here in the bottom of the first inning, and it's a righty. That's the one thing I've known. We've seen a lot of lefties come up here for both sides to kick the game off. Now you change things up, you got a right-handed bat coming in there.
And he's not able to make contact with that one is Garland, the third baseman. Seen so make a, a great catch on the infield, the running catch back in the top of the first. And that's hit foul, and that gives the Royals another jump scare. Garland giving a scare to his opponent, uh, his teammates there. Now trying to do the same thing to his opponents. Bottom of the first inning. One out and a 3-2 to two lead for the DDO Expos. Two strikes on Garland, who's in there right now. And that's hit well into right. That'll drop and cause a little problems out there in right field. Garland... Gets the second with a double, and the Royals have the game tying run aboard. So he's 21, Mason Wilcoke Landry, who's stepping into bat. Ball goes in the dirt. Three to two, Expos leading. And that's hit well at the center. Thrown into second. It's a single and an RBI single, in fact, for Bullcoke Landry. And the game is tied 3 3. So here's Noah Patterson. Taking a ball off the, the dish. Not exactly what something he wanted to see. And now the Royals bench getting into it here as they've scored three to tie this game up. Fouled back in. Oh! That's front row tickets. That's from. That's a front row view right now of a yard, but nearly had a bird's eye view of a car window. That one just missed. And now it's hidden in the dirt, and they're going to call it foul. <laughs> How many times do you think this neighbor's had a ball show up in their yard <laughs> over the years? One and two on Patterson. And he fouls this one back. Patterson staying alive, one ball, two strikes. And Patterson stays alive again, protecting that plate. Two strikes on Patterson. Bottom of the first of this uh, U9A round robin of the Lac St. Louis Regionals. The winner of this game finishes second in the pool. Royals a one run loss to Lakeshore on Wednesday night. And it's fouled in the dirt again and this will be the ninth pitch of the at bat for Patterson. He's uh, he's going to be a battler at the next level, that's for sure, and be a nuisance to opposing pitchers. And he hits this one on the ground to second. Good play. And they got him out at second. 
Patterson's aboard and there's two down. Jonah Mendel makes the play. Four unassisted on the putout. There's two down and here comes Matteo Di Pierna. And De Pierna decides not to go around. And De Pierna not able to make contact with this one. That's uh, called first strike. Remember, you get three strikes, but unlimited amount of pitches. And that's fouled back, and suddenly De Pierna down to his final strike here. 3-3 scoreline, Expos and Royals. Here's the 1-2 to De Pierna. And he hits this one well. Fair, fair down the right field line. And the Royals looking to get two in. One run scores, De Pierna on his horse. He scores! The Royals put up five and take a two-run lead. It's 5-3, heading into the top of the second inning. You're watching Baby Blue Memories. Welcome back to Kirkland Park. Top of the second we go. The West Island Royals here at the U9A level have a 5-3 a lead against the DDO Expos as we head into the top of the second inning. Here's Noah Pica, Pichan, Pichon, Pachega hitting this one right to second. And he's safe. He beats it out. That's why you hustle down that first baseline. And Pichon Bacasia has himself a leadoff single. And here's Mondi Ali. The number, uh, the, the last hitter in the lineup. Ali stepping in. And Ali swings through this one at strike one on him. Runner on first base, and what would be the game-tying run is at the dish here in the top of the second inning. And Ali swings through this one, and it's a second strike on Monty Ali. Ali hits this one up the ground. They're going to tag second to throw across the diamond. Got him! Double play! Double play! Two down! Sammy Granado turns the double play. 4-3 on the double play, and there are two down. And Massimo... Piccioni will step into bat. How about that double play? Good play by the second baseman, Granato. And that pitch is something Piccioni does not like. The layoff. That swung on and missed.
Foul back. And that's foul back and another pitch of this at bat coming up for the Expos. Massimo Piccioni trying to keep this at bat alive and this inning alive. There are two outs. After Samuel Granado helped turn a fourth 5-3 a double play. Here's the one-two. And again, Piccioni fighting that one off, keeping this at bat and this inning alive for the Expos. Piccioni trying to keep this inning going for West uh, for DDO. It's 5-3 West Island Royals. There are two outs. Here's the pitch. Hit well into shallow center, and that is going to drop, and it's a base hit for Massimo Piccioni. And DDO has a runner aboard. A bloop single into shallow center. And here's Bryce Mendel. Mendel is one for one. He singled and scored back in the top of the first. Mendel fouls this one off. Strike one. Five three West Island Royals here in the top of the second. DDO Expos and West Island Royals, each of whom are 0-1 in the round robin. That's fouled back. And Mendel now down to his final strike here. 0-2. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Mendel. On the ground, up to second. Granado makes the play, flips the second in time. And that inning was the Sammy Granado show. It's 5-3 West Island Royals at the end of one and a half. Bottom two we go, you're watching Baby Blue Memories. Welcome back to Kirkland Park. We're getting set for the bottom of the second inning. Five to three, West Island Royals on top of the DDO Expos here in this round robin game, the U9A Island Division. Winner of this game will play against likely the St. Laurent Crush in the quarterfinals for the round of 12. Lakeshore won this, re this section or at least this pool, with a 15-14 win over West Island earlier this week. So they are already into the quarterfinals. And so these two teams just fighting it out for positioning in the round of 12. Here's the pitch. And that is swung on and missed in a... First out for Philip Wilson. And here comes Crimson Whitley for the Royals. Whitley and then Peter Chaho. Peter Chaho coming in to bat after Whitley. So one down for West Island in the bottom of the second. So how they play it here 
is very similar to how they call it for U11s in the sense that it's an hour and a half and then they'll call the the open inning unless we get to six but it's the bottom of the second here and we're pretty much halfway there already so I don't know if we're going to see uh, six innings tonight. And Whitley comes up empty on that swing, nothing in one on him. Whitley can't make contact here and it's nothing in two on him. Two strikes on Whitley, and Whitley lays off. Good eye from him. Did not like what he saw there. And they'll replay it. Whitley, the right-handed batter, wearing four in blue, and he is not able to make contact, and that is a second out here in the bottom of the second. And here's Peter Shaho. What a big difference from the first to the second inning. A combined eight runs put up by these two teams in the first inning and zero put up thus far. A bagel put up by the Expos in the top of the second and two outs quickly here for the Royals in the bottom of the second. So there's two outs, 5-3 West Island Royals leading. As uh, Shaho lays this uh, lays off this pitch, Shaho makes contact. Good stop. The throw to first. Got him. What a play made over at second base by Dylan Rose, and that's going to do it for the second inning. One, two, three, go the West Island Royals. We're going to the top of the third. 5-3 Royals over the DDO Expos. We welcome you back to Kirkland Park, top of the third here in this round-robin game at the U9A division. The online on island section, 5-3 West Island Royals leading the DDO Expos as Jordan Mandel steps into bat. Mandel one for one with a single. He also has scored a run. That was, of course, that three-run home run by the next guy coming up, Marcelo Piccioni, as Mandel lays off this pitch. Looking at the other pool, St. Laurent Crush are 0-1. Lachine is 1-0, Pierre Fall 1-1. One one. So Lachine needs to beat St. Laurent today to clinch first place. And that's hit well at the center. And it gets by and into center field. Jeho picks it up. And it is a leadoff double for Jonah Mendel. Oh, good effort by Jeho in center, but... Now the rain is starting to pick up velocity here, so one has to wonder if that maybe made things a little more difficult. It's, it's drizzle, but it's not light right now. It's more or less just like a drizzle drizzle. I'm under the safety of a tree and really hoping that any thunder and lightning stays away while I'm underneath said tree. Top of the third, 5-3. West Island Royals leading the DDO Expos here in this round robin matchup. Well, over the last week and a half, we've got seen an unbelievable heat wave here. 
And it, it almost feels like we had to put our our sweaters on. I wore a hoodie this morning, actually, on my way to the field. It was 15 degrees when I got up. That swung on and missed by Piccioni trying to get his team uh, some more momentum. It was 34 degrees without the humidity 48 hours ago, or maybe 44. But you get the point. Things have cooled down a little bit here. Piccioni sends this one deep. It's caught! It's caught! It's caught! It's caught, but... Uh, Mindell advances the third, and there's one out, but... What a catch! In left field, in right field. That's out number one. A very loud out number one. For DDO and Quinn Lazar steps up to bat. He is one for one. So the DDO Expos have a runner on third base with one down here in the top of the third. On the ground. And it takes a big hop. And that is an RBI single on the bounce. And the DDO Expos are within one now. It's 5-4. RBI single for Lazar. One run game. And here's Max Bassell. 0 for 1 popped out back in the first. And the Royals lead has been trimmed down to 1. 5 4 West Island. On the ground, right to third, it gets through to the outfield. And runners are now on the corners for the Expos, and DDO continues to knock on the door. So here's Dylan Rose, who has singled. He's one for one on the day. And the Expos are knocking on the door. Rose lays off. Royals outfield has uh, moved in a little bit here on Rose. And Rose comes up empty with that swing. And that's fouled back. I'm having a hard time deciphering whether or not that was the first. I think that's the first strike. That second one, they said that Rose held back. So it's only one strike on Dylan Rose. Ooh, does not like what he sees on that pitch, so he won't swing. Runners on the corners, one out. That swung on and missed. And that is a second strike.
So the Royals switching things up and they're taking their catcher out. So Crimson Whitley not behind the plate right now. Whitley coming out. And yeah, he got he he took one that looked like right in the ribs. And so Whitley it's like he took a shot in the ribs on that pitch, and that's not good news for West Island. And instead, Mason Bullock, Woko Glandry, I think, is coming in to catch for West Island. Hit well, and that'll get through on the right side of the outfield. And DDO's tied it up here. It's 5-5, and two runners are aboard for the Expos. I see him. Is he okay? Like the rib cage, eh? So two runners aboard for DDO, and here's Nicholas Ng, who lined out back in the first. All for one on the day. Ng swings to this one at strike one. So Landry is in at catcher now. I'm sorry, Landry's at short. And Jagger Bomer has moved to catch behind the blade. And he holds off here. 5-5, five, five, two runs in for DDO here in the top of the third. He's got a swing. Hit on the ground. And there's a grounder, and it's fielded well and taken to the bag for out number two here in the top of the third. So in grounds out. Patterson's at second. Second base, I should say, as a second baseman. Bassell's at third, Rose is at second, two down. And Noah Pichon Kago steps in. Bakega, sorry, steps in the bat. He's one for one with a single. Was thrown out on a double play ball back in the top of the second inning. Two outs. And that's hit foul, and there's that's the first strike. Alexi Prevo, the first baseman, made that previous play for the Royals. That's hit well. And it's caught! All right, number 21 Landry, and that is going to do it here for the top of the third. The Expos scored two, and we're all square 5-5 five, five, heading into the bottom of the third inning. You're watching Baby Blue Memories. We welcome you back to Kirkland Park. 
The final game of the round robin for both of these two teams at the U9A level. It's 5-5. West Island Royals coming up to bat. Peter Rozewski leading things off for the Royals. And that's fouled back for a first strike. Alexi Prevo and Jagger Boomer, the three who are coming up to bat for the Royals. 5-5, bottom of the third inning. And Boomer swings this one, and it's fair, I think. No, called foul. It's just a long strike, and he'll have to go back. So Rozewski facing a two-strike count here. He's the last batter. He was the last batter on the the lineup sheet. Then we go back to the top of the lineup. That's fouled back, and we're going to have another pitch here. So Razuski doing a good job of keeping this at bat alive. And Razuski swings here and is down on strikes. That's the first out in the bottom of the third. Back to the top of the lineup for the Royals. Here's Alexi Prevo. He's one for one, singled and scored back in the bottom of the first inning. See some players for the Lachine A's arriving to the ball field here. Lachine against St. Laurent. If St. Laurent can't win that game, then they will play the winner of this one. And Prevo hits this one to the hole. The throw. Not in time. So we have a runner on first base here. So here's Jagger Boomer, one for one with a home run back in the bottom of the first. He has two run RBIs, but does not like what he sees here. And he's foul tips this one back, so a first strike on Boomer. 5-5 five, five score line, bottom of the third. West Island Royals, DDO Expos, winner finishes second. And that's hit well and into right field. Bomer rounding, heads to second. He's going to slide and stop over at second base. Runners on second and third, so two runners in scoring position for the Royals. And West Island looking to retake the lead. And here's Sammy Granado, who is... 0 for 1, struck out back in the first, but in a crucial spot here for his team to try and give them the lead. And the Expos outfield is playing him deep here. Granado, the number three batter. And Granado doesn't like that pitch, so he'll lay off. Liam Garland on deck for the Royals. 5-5 five, five score. And that swung on and missed. First strike on the at-bat. Remember, there's no walks here because of the fact that they're pitching with machines. No hits, batsman. And that strike two here on Granado as he can't find that one. Granado who's had a game of wizardry on the defensive end trying to chip in here with some offense. And he fouls this one back, staying alive in the at-bat. Two strikes on him. And the Expos know he has to swing at this one. And that is swung on and missed in a crucial second out here. And here's Liam Garland, who has doubled and scored a run. 
So Garland represents the a possible last chance to put the Expos in the uh, the Royals in the lead here. It's 5-5. A win or a tie would put West Island in second place in the pool. And in the other pool, St. Laurent's 0-1, Pierrefall finished 1-1, one one, the Lachine's 1-0. So Pierrefall would have to beat Lachine, or sorry, St. Laurent would have to beat Lachine by, I believe, three or four runs to finish out of last place. But they still have a chance at winning that pool as Garland swings through strike one. But they would have to beat the A's by about six or seven to win that pool. And now Garland, strike two on him. Royals knocking on the door, but will it open? West Island trying to take the lead. Hit well, and that's going to fly into left field. A base hit, one has come in. And two runs are home for one of the West Island Royals. It's 7-5. William Garland with his second double of the game. Or his second base hit of the game. It's a single here. But it is of the two-run single variety. So the West Island Royals have surged out back in front. It's now 7-5. And here is Mason Landry. Wilcoke we'll Landry stepping into bat. Two runs in here in the bottom of the third for West Island. 7-5 lead. Landry lays off. Did not like what he's seen right there. Hit well to center, that's going to find a hole and make its way to center field. Runners rounding second, and now they're going to send both of them. The throw home's not in time, and the Royals make it 8-5. It is an RBI triple for Mason Bullcoke Landry, and West Island is now in front 8-5. Here's Noah Patterson, who reached on a fielder's choice back in the first inning. 8-5, there are two outs. Patterson not able to make contact there at strike one. Hit well to shallow center, and that is caught by Massimo Piccioni. And that's going to do it for the bottom of the third. The Royals score three. The Expos down by a score of 8-5 to five as we head into the top of the fourth. You're watching Regional Baseball on Baby Lou Memories. Welcome back to Kirkland Park. It's the top of the fourth inning, and the West Island Royals currently in front of the DDO Expos by a score of 8-5 to five here in the final game of the round-robin portion of this regional. The winner here would finish in second place in the pool and play a quarterfinal against whoever finishes last place in Pool B. The St. Laurent Crush would need to win today by, three, by four runs to finish outside of last place. But the funny thing is for the Crush, they're not coming, they're not coming in first place. They're not coming in second place. They're either finishing last or first. And if the three teams finish tied, Pierrefall would be declared the champion of that pool. So a lot of wild things could happen later on today in that pool. We do know Lakeshore is first in this pool. And the winner of this game is second, and the loser is third. Swung on and missed by 
Ali. Mondi Ali, who hit it to a double play back in the second. It is going back to the dugout. And that's an out. So Ali is down on uh, strikes. And here's Massimo Piccioni back to the top of the lineup. He is one for two with a single. Does not like what he sees here. Piccioni lays off. Not exactly where he wanted it to be. On the ground, back to the pitcher. Piccioni beats it out. <laughs> well, we're actually right near the uh, West Island bullpen, as you can see the action very much. Uh, in person here at Kirkland Park. It's the regionals, so why not, right? As Bryce Mendel will step into bat here for the Expos. Piccioni on first. One down. And Mendel not able to make contact here as he comes up empty. Hit well, but into the shallow infield that's caught. And there's two down here in the top of the fourth. Liam Garland catches that pop fly. And here's Jora Mendel, who is two for two on the night. Jora Mendel trying to get the Expos train started here it's a5 west island royals in the top of the fourth inning here's the pitch and he lays off does mendel Jorah Mendel, two for two. He scored two runs. He has singled and he has doubled. And he hits this one on the ground. And they get him out at second base, a bang bang play. But that is going to do it for the top of the fourth. So the Expos have come up empty. The Royals looking to come up and add to their lead. It's 8-5 West Island heading into the bottom of the fourth. We welcome you back to Kirkland Park heading into the bottom of the fourth. The West Island Royals on top 8-5 to and looking to add to their lead. Here in this final round robin game against the DDO Expos. The Royals lead is three, and here is Matteo Di Pierna, who is one for one with the home run. And Di Pierna lays off of this pitch. Di Pierna swings through this one, and it's an even count. One strike on him. Oh 
And the Pirna misses. And that's a two strike count. I don't know if they counted that as a no pitch there. Umpire made a late signal. And that is strike three. So the Pirna. Nope, that's strike two. Okay, so that's what it was. It was a no pitch call there. So the Pirna has one strike left. And he hits this one right back to the pitcher, but off of the cage. So they're going to redo it as it is a foul ball. 8-5 West Island Royals. Winner of this game plays the team that finishes in third in the other pool, which is still up for grabs. The Lachine A's, the St. Laurent Crush, and the Pierrefall Dodgers all within striking distance of each other. Pierrefall is 1-1, one and one, but the only way they'll win that pool is as if the three teams finish tied at 1-1 one and one, and St. Laurent wins by exactly three runs over Lachine. If Lachine wins or ties today, they finish first, Pierrefall second, St. Laurent third, and St. Laurent would have to play the winner of this game in the quarters. The only thing we do know for sure is Lakeshore is in into the semis as the one team in this pool. De Pirna off the edge of the bat. That's caught at second base for out number one. And De Pirna goes down on the pop out and here comes Philip Wilson. Wilson 0 for 1 struck out back in the second. So here's Wilson. Wilson hits this one up to short. Good stop. The throw to first in time. Great play over at shortstop by Quinn Lazar, 22. And quickly, two up and two down for the West Island Royals in the bottom of the fourth. And here comes Crimson Whitley. So Whitley, good to see him back out there. He took a shot in the rib cage while catching earlier and had to be taken out of the game momentarily, but good to see him back out there. And he lays off of this pitch. Whitley fouls this one off. Whitley not able to come up with uh, contact on this one. And it's a two strike count on Crimson Whitley. Whitley trying to keep the inning going. Lays off of this pitch, did not like what he saw. Whitley hits this one, foul, and they'll have to redo it. Good job by four and blue, keeping this hat bat alive. It's dark blue against baby blue, pretty much, or light blue, if you will. Think of it, white trim against red trim. That's pretty much what they're going with here. The Expo's wearing the red trim, the Royals in blue and white. Whitley on the ground, and again, he's going to keep this hat bat going here. So the seventh pitch of this at-bat is coming up right now against Crimson Whitley. Whitley on the ground. Played at second to throw to first. Gets by and Crimson Whitley with the base hit. And the Royals keep the inning going here in the bottom of the fourth. And Peter Shaho is up to bat for the Royals. Runner on first base, and this inning is still going. Oh. 
Royals trying to get that two out rally going. Recorded the first two outs before Whitley beat that throw out and kept this inning going for West Island. 8-5 Royals. Swung on and missed by Shaho. Hit well to shallow center, that falls. Peter Shaho with the single. And now two runners are aboard for West Island. And here comes Peter Rozuski for the Royals. Rozuski 0 for 1, struck out in the third. And West Island threatening once again here in the bottom of the fourth. More importantly, tick, 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 because the game started at 10 o'clock. First pitch was at 10 1. It's 11 26 right now. And we have an injury in center field. Noah Pichon Pakega, it looks like, coming up a little limp. And uh, I think he's going to make his way out. Holding on to his right knee. But he's going to stay in the game. He's a gamer. So Razuski steps in with two runners on for West Island. Royals leading 8-5 here in the bottom of the fourth. And that's fouled back for strike one. Hit well on the infield, caught, and that is out number three. And that's going to do it as we head into the top of the fifth. Royals do not score. It's 8-5 West Island after four innings. We welcome you back to Kirkland Park as we head into the top of the fifth, possibly the open inning. We did not get an official word, but we do know that the Expos would like to score three anyway, and the guy to help lead that charge is coming up the bat right now, and Marcelo Piccioni, one for two, lined out hard to right field in the third inning, but hit a three-run home run in the top of the first, so he's hit the ball quite well on both of his hits and takes ball one here. 8-5 Royals leading. This is the top of the fifth inning, possibly the open inning. Possibly. No official word. If we look at the start time for this inning, well, it was officially started at 11.31, so I think it is the open inning. Don't quote me on that, though. Don't want to count the chickens before they hatch. Piccioni hits this one into foul territory. One strike on him. Looking at the Royals defensively. De Pirna's at, or sorry, Wilson's at third. Landry at short. Patterson's second. And that's hit well into deep center. And it'll get by 
The center fielder, Granado. Granado picks it up, throws it in, and now the runner's on his horse, going home. The throw comes up late, and it's an inside the park home run. And it's 8 6. Marcelo Piccioni has gone deep. And it's 8 6 West Island here in the top of the open. And we're two runs away are the DDO Expos. 8-6 Royals on top. So here is Quinn Lazar. Two for two with two singles and a run scored. And a stellar game defensively in the infield. Pretty much the left side of the infield the entire game. Doesn't like that pitch. Hit well to center. That drops. Granado handles it on the bounce, but the Royals make the play, and the Expos have what would be the game-tying run coming up to bat right now in Max Bassell. Bassell one for two. Eight-six West Island leading here in the top of the fifth. One run in for the Expos. Vassell hits this one into foul territory, and that'll be strike one. Fouled back, and that's a second strike here on Bassell. Dylan Rose on deck for the Expos. He's two for two. Hit well right at me. Fair ball. That pins the line. And that. Oh, I don't think they're going to like this call. I think they called it foul. Oh. Oh my. Hey guys, guys, guys. Oh my, they called that one foul. <laughs> and you know what? The Expos realize I'm here, so they might be calling for the rarely seen coach's challenge here. Oh my. Well, we have the benefit of the replay and we'll take a look at it afterwards. Boy, what a shot by Bassell. Unfortunately, it's just a long strike. And Bassell hits this one into the shallow right field. That falls. Runners going. Safe at third. Hey, hey, hey. 
And here comes Dylan Rose with the game tying run now aboard for the Expos. Rose two for two with two singles in this game, and he's got two runners aboard. Runners on the corners. Nobody out for DDO, and it's fouled back. Rose hits this one up the right, left side of the gut. Base hit, and the Expos are within a run. It's now 8-7. RBI single for Dylan Rose. And it's a one-run game, 8-7. And now two runners aboard, nobody out. And questions remain as to whether or not this is the open inning, because if it is the open inning, then the max fifth run at home plate right now doesn't count and is irrelevant. But if it isn't, then this is what would be the maximum fifth run stepping into bat. Nicholas Ng. Ng hits this one well. Knocked down. They touch third to throw to first. Got him! Double play! Two down! Landry steps up large! And Noah Pichon Bacasia steps into bat. Two down. And you know something? I think Bacasia is out. So Pichon Bacasia is out. So it's Mandy Ali, Ali stepping into bat. 8-7, runner on third, two outs. Ali swings through this one at strike one. Eight seven West Island tying runs on third for the Expos. Ali fouls this one back. Two strikes on Mandy Ali. Eight seven West Island Royals leading. That swung on and missed. And that is strike three, and the West Island Royals have prevailed by a final score of eight to seven. And the Royals will finish the round robin of this regionals Actually, you know what? I don't think it is over. No. We're heading to the bottom of the fifth. And this ball game's not over yet. 8 7. All right, so we're back with the bottom of the fifth. The West Island Royals leading the DDO Expos by a score of 8-7. to seven. Top of the lineup coming to the bat for the Royals. Alexi Prevo is 2-for-2 two two with two runs scored.
And that swung on and missed for strike one. 8-7, bottom of the fifth. The game was started at 11. The inning was officially ruled to start at 11.30. And that's a comebacker. Prevo trying to beat it out. The throw. Out. One down. Good hustle by the pitcher fielding that one. And you see the pitcher, Bryce Mendel. I'm sorry, it's Matt Bassel. Max Bassel, who had that line drive right down the line and left here that was called foul. And here's Bomer takes a pitch inside. Pitch to Bomer. Bomer fouls this one off. That's strike one. Bomer and then Sammy Granado stepping in for the Royals. And that's hit well, but foul. Two strikes on Bomer. Bomer on the ground. It takes the hop and gets through into the outfield. Mendel plays it, but Bomer reaches second on the double. And Jagger Bomer now three for three on the morning. And here's Sammy Granado, 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Eight, seven Royals. One down here in the bottom of the fifth. Looking at the Expos in the next inning, the top of the lineup with Massimo Piccioni, Bryce Mendel, and Jora Mendel. Runner on second, one down. Foul back. One and one to count. Foul back. What a catch in the uh, stands by a young fan here on the West Island Royals sideline. 1-2 on Granado. Granado on the ground, right back to the pitcher. The throw to first, gets away! Granado. Slides in a textbook slide. He's in there with a double. It's an RBI double. And the Royals take a two-run lead. It's 9-7. And here comes Leon Garland. So Garland stepping into bat. Runner on second, one out for the Royals. Not in there. Garland didn't like what he's seen. Garland fouls this one off. One strike on Liam. Coming up after this here at Kirkland Park, it's the Lachine A's and the St. Laurent Crush. The Crush need to win by four runs to avoid finishing in last place in that pool. 
If they finish last place in that pool, that means they play the winner of this game in the quarterfinals. Fouled back, and that's a second strike on Garland. Garland hits this one up the right side of the field and a base hit for Liam Garland. And one run scores. They throw it into third or to second and it is an RBI triple for Liam Garland. And Garland is now three for three on the night and it's 10-7 West Island. Here's Boko Landry, who is two for two on the night. Landry takes ball one. Two runs in for West Island here in the bottom of the inning. Landry hits this one up the gut and into left field. Landry rounding third now. They're going to send him home. Here's the throw. Home run. Mason Landry, and it's 12-7. Four runs in for the Royals. And Patterson will step into bat now. So Patterson, with one down here in the bottom of the fifth, will step into bat. Patterson fouls this one off for strike one. 12-7 Royals, the open inning coming up, and the Expos are sending the top of their lineup to bat. So this game far from over. Hit on the ground right back to the pitcher, Basil. He throws the first in time. And that is going to do it for the bottom, or no, that's two out, sorry. Not done yet. Patterson 0 for 3, and here comes Mateo De Pirna. De Pirna 1 for 2 on the night. He is home run, he did a home run, and popped out in his two at bat so far. 12-7 West Island Royals on top. The Perna decides to lay off. The Perna fouls it off. And the Perna fouls this one off for strike two. The Pernaf pops it out, and that is caught on the infield by Basel for out number three. DDO Expos need to score five to keep the game alive. It's 12-7 Royals heading into the top of the open inning. Uh, we welcome you back to Kirkland Park. Open inning, 12-7 West Island Royals leading the DDO Expos. Uh, the Expos needing five to tie, sending the top of their lineup to bat. Massimo Piccioni, two for three, stepping into bat here. Not liking these pitches. So Piccioni and then Bryce and Jorah Mendel, two, three, coming up the bat for Dollar Days or Mo. Just sharing a few laughs earlier with uh, 
My physical ed education teacher from Howard S. Billings back in grades 9, 10, and 11, Ron Graham, whose grandson, uh, Jagger Bomer, actually plays for the Royals. So what a small world we live in, don't we? And currently, Piccioni not liking what he's seeing from the pitching machine. 12-7, DDO needs five to tie. And he lays off again. So now he's going to have to swing. That's four pitches. So, Massimo Piccioni not liking what he's seeing here. Hit well into deep center, that falls. Thrown in. Play at second, maybe he's in there with a the leadoff double. Massimo Piccioni gets the rally monkeys started here for West or DDO. And he's got a double, and Bryce Mendel will step into bat for DDO. So it's 12 7. Good start for Dollar Days Armo as they have a runner on second base to kick off the top of the open inning. They need five, but they put themselves in a good position here. Mendel one for three, and he hits this one fouled. First strike on Mendel. And we're going to have an injury substitution for DDO. So Rajewski comes in to play third base. And meanwhile coming out is Depirna. So Depirna is out and Rajewski's in over at third base. On the ground, that's going to get through, but no one moves from second, so it's just two runners on. Smart play by Piccioni holding over at first base. He didn't have to go anywhere because there was no force, and the two lead runners are in, or on board, I should say, for DDO. Runners on first and second, and Jorah Mendel steps in. He is two for three. Has a single, double, and has grounded out. Has a run scored as well. Two runs scored, in fact. 12-7 West Island, but DDO knocking on the door. And the Expo's getting that rally monkey going here. Foul back. 12-7 lead for West Island, but the Expos have two runners on to start this inning. This is the top of the open inning. The Expos need five, but they've gotten things off to a good start here as Jorah Mendel steps into bat. And that's fouled off. Two strikes on Jorah Mendel.
Mendel lays off, did not like what he saw. Two strikes on Dora. Runners on first and second. And this is the last pitch, so Mendel has to swing. Unless it's something deemed to be way out of the strike zone and unhittable. Hit on the ground and it gets through to the outfield. Bryce Mendel gets the third and a run is in and it is now 12-8. And Marcelo Piccioni will step into bat. He is two for three with two home runs. And the Royals are going to give him the respect that he has commanded here. Has hit the ball hard into left or right three different times. Two home runs and then one brilliant catch out in right field. 12-8 West Island leading but DDO knocking on the door. And right now you see the the shift for the Royals, that's the second baseman and the first baseman, so they are really shifting towards that right field line. 12-8. And Piccioni decides to let that one go by. Piccioni watches this one go by as well. Twelve eight, West Island Royals. This is the top of the open inning. Runners on the corners. Nobody out for DDO. So the Expos have already put one in. Trying to barge through that door. And it's fouled back as Piccioni makes contact with it. Twelve eight Royals leading. The Expos have one run in and two runners aboard. And that's hit well into deep center. It drops. One run scores. And they're gonna wave a second runner around. And he scores. It's a two run double. And it's twelve ten. And look no further than this. The game-tying run is coming into bat right now. Quinn Lazar, and he is three for three with three singles today. <laughs> Piccioni three for four now on the day. Lazar stepping into bat. A single could make this a one run game and put the tying run aboard. He's going to lay off here. Twelve ten West Island Royals leading, but the game tying runs coming into bat right now for Dollar Days or Mo. Swung on and missed. That's strike one. Matt Vassell's on deck for the Expos. He's two for three. Hit well into center. It's dropped. Good diving effort. Runners are on the corners. 
What a th attempt though in center field by Prevo and he almost got there. Runners on the corners. Lazar is now four for four. And here comes Max Bissell with the game tying run on first. Bissell and Dylan Rose do up here and the Expos crowd is yelling. 12-10, runners on first and third. And Bissell fouls this one off, strike one. Philip Wilson, Crimson Whitley, and Pete Chahot do up for the uh, Royals in the bottom half of the inning if we get there. Hit well into deep left, and it's going to be fair. They're going to send him home. And the game is tied 12-12. The DDO Expos have rallied. And here's Dylan Rose. Five runs in for DDO in the open inning. They have put up a five spot to tie the game. Wow. And he and everything happens at the regionals. Swung on and missed. And now DDO in position to take the lead for the first time since the first inning. On the ground. Takes a bad hop. He's safe at first. And runners are on the corners. And Dylan Rose has his fourth hit. He's four for four. Runners on the corners. The Expos have rallied from five down to tie it here in the open inning. And here's Nicholas Ng. We went from thinking this game was over an inning ago, and now Ng hits this one to shallow center, caught on the run, one out. And Nicholas Ng lines out hard to Prevo down in center field. That's the first out. And here comes Mandy Ali. Top of the lineup coming up after Ali. Ali is 0 for 3 on the day. Ali swings through strike one. Massimo Piccioni on deck for DDO. The game is tied 12-12. Swung on and missed. That's strike two. Mandy Ali trying to Put the Expos in front for the first time since the top of the first inning. Lays off that pitch. Wow, what a game. Ali makes contact. Sends this one fair down the line and into the outfield. Expos take the lead. Ali runs second, rounding third. Monty Ali coming in. It's a three run home run. And the Expos take the lead 15 to 12. This is one of the most unbelievable things 
that we've seen in a while here on BBM. Expos have put up an eight spot on the West Island Royals, and they are still batting. Wow. We bring you back here to the top of the open inning. The DDO Expos have scored eight runs. They lead it 15 to 12. Massimo Piccioni is batting for the second time in this open inning. And DDO is down a batter. Pichon Bacaga, who uh, was started the game in right field, injured in the top of the bottom of the third and has not returned since. So his spot in the lineup has been replaced by Ali. And Ali with a three run home run here to give DDO the lead, 15 to 12. There's one out, eight runs are in for DDO. Hit well into shallow right, caught for the second out. Good catch by Patterson out there in left field and that's two down. Good catch by Patterson and here comes Bryce Mendel hitting for the second time in this inning. Two down here. On the ground. That's going to get through to center field. Brevo stops it. And Mendel's on base for the second time this inning. And here's Jorah Mendel, three for four, and he's batting for the second time in this inning. Two outs here in the top of the open inning. The Expos were down 12-7. It's now 15-12. The Royals will send Wilson, Whitley, and Chaho to bat in the bottom half of this open inning. Two outs here. On the ground to third, stopped, and the throw to second. Safe. And the inning continues. And here's Marcelo Piccioni coming up to bat for the second time in the inning. And the outfielders for the Royals backing up, giving Piccioni the respect that she commands here. Piccioni lays off, does not like what he sees there. Oh, 
I have, I have that in there. Yeah. Just, I, I wasn't expecting the game to go this way. None of us did. <laughs> but I can, I can put this on just in... Sure. Well, it's fallen now. I think it fell. Like, I put it back up, but I think it might have fallen. Yeah. Okay. So Marcelo Piccioni with two out and two on. And he fouls this one off. And this will be the last pitch for Piccioni. Piccioni tonight, three for four, has lined out, hit two home runs, hit a double, and has six RBIs. Hits this one, well caught! What a grab! At second base! That is going to do it. And will that bring some momentum back to the deep West Island Royals? They need three to tie. They're coming up after this. 15-12 DDO Expos, West Island Royals coming up to bat. Welcome back to Kirkland Park. This has been one of the most unbelievable ball games we've ever seen. And there might be even more to write. Philip Wilson stands in. His team trailing 15 to 12. Wilson not able to make contact here. Crimson Whitley, Peter Shaho coming up. Hit on the ground to third, to throw to first. Safe, he beats it out. Philip Wilson leads the inning off with a base hit. An infield single for Wilson. And here comes Crimson Whitley. Lead off single for the Royals. Whitley swings and not able to come up with contact there. Not in the strike zone. Whitley holds off. Whitley not able to make contact. That's a second, second strike on Crimson Whitley. Peter Shaho on deck for the West Island Royals. And don't forget this game could end in a tie. And if it does, the Royals would be the two and the Expos would be the three. It's an unbelievable thing. This is not an elimination game. Either. For positioning. Whitley hits this one. Foul ball, foul ball, foul ball. And we're going to still go here. Last pitch of the at bat. Whitley fouls this one off. Whitley's still in there, though. Good job to protect that plate. That's strike three, though. 
And there is one down here in the bottom of the open inning. And here comes Peter Chahot, who is one for two with a single. Chahot and then P Peter Rozuski. And then if we get past Rozuski, we'd head back to the top of the lineup with Alexi Prevo. Chahot does not like what he sees here. Chaho one for two. He's grounded out and singled. Foul back by Chaho, and we've got an even count. One ball, one strike. One down. 15 to 12. DDO Expos on top, and there's one down. Chaho makes contact to first. They're going to get the sure out at first base. But a runner heads over to second, and there are two down. And Peter Rozewski comes in, 0 for 2 with a pop out. Rozuski does not like that pitch location. And don't forget, Philip Wilson does not have to run here. So he could just stay at second base if he feels like that's necessary. Foul back. And the Royals are down to their final strike. Rajewski hits this one on the ground, fielded the throw to first in time. And the DDO Expos have come all the way back from a five run deficit in the open inning. And win this one by a final count of 15 to 12. What a wild game here in Kirkland. The Royals finish 0-2 with a couple of tough losses. And the Expos get to 1-1, so West Island will play against the team which finishes second in the other pool, which right now looks like Pierre Fall. But it'll depend on what happens in the next game between Lachine and St. Laurent. Let's take a look at the game MVPs. First for West Island. Actually, sorry, first for DDO. Number 34, Marcelo Piccioni. And for West Island, the game MVP is right there. Daddy, daddy, Having a hard time daddy, getting a number. It looks daddy, like it's number daddy. 16, 21. Looks like it's number 21, who is Mason uh, Landry. So your final score here in Park Kirkland, DDO Expos 15, West Island Royals 12. I'm Brandon Border for Baby Blue Memories. Take care. On to Giwahe.